Okay. Today's episode took a little bit of courage. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little anxious about releasing this episode, but oh, I have to, I have to. Um, so here's what happened. <laughs> I was supposed to interview the owner of a company that has a ketone ester product or they're, they're claiming that they're the first drinkable ketone ester. And when I saw that, I was like, no, you're not ketone aid has been around forever. And I've been using their products forever. And Frank Yosa from ketone aid is like, in my opinion, the authority on ketone esters. He's, you know, I, I said, say in the intro to the episode when I'm, when Frank, you'll see Frank on, but I mean, he's the guy back in the day when you heard, you know, Tim Ferriss talking about how Ben Greenfield took these things called ketone esters and they helped his athletic performance that they were like thousands of dollars a serving and nobody could get them. This is in the early days of, you know, keto and ketones and all that stuff. And that was Frank. That was Frank. So he's been around forever. He talks about in this episode how his his wife's godfather is like the leader of ketone, like the guy who basically discovered ketone esters. He, he passed away not too long ago. Um, and he actually shares a video of him talking about something with C8. That's really interesting in this episode. So basically I, I saw the claims when I, I raised an eyebrow, when I saw this company claiming that it was the first drinkable ketone ester. Cause I was like, no, it's not. And I trust and respect Frank so much. So I just texted him and I was like, can you tell me the difference between yours, how you compare with this new product? And he was like, call me. So I called him. And he's like, dude, it's not honest marketing. I'm just gonna be real with you. It's not honest. It's they're, they're fudging the science a little bit. They're claiming that they're ketone esters, which are not actually ketone esters. What they are is the same thing that I market as hard ketones, like a alcohol. It is an alcohol. He talks about that. He cr- kind of corrects me in the beginning. He's like, no, it is an alcohol. It just doesn't turn into acetyl aldehyde, like regular alcohol does that has ethanol in it. Right. But he's marketing this as like a how to get a buzz and they're marketing it as ketone esters. And he's like, it's not ketone esters. And he's going to explain how that all works. I asked him to please be as plain language as possible. So he did it. He did a good job, but there are a couple little, you know, this, this stuff that this company that hit me up, it's called, um, what it is, is R13 butane dial and they're marketing it as ketone esters and R13 butane dial is what Frank is using as keto, like alcohol or alternative. Right. So yeah. Um, I, I hate to like bust anybody's chops, but I also like my main goal is always to give you guys the best information that I have access to. That's why I started the podcast. So that's what we're doing today. We're just being real. So (laughs) Uh, a little anxious about releasing it, but we're going to, so here is Frank Yosa. Before we get in the show, I wanted to make sure that you guys knew about two awesome things that I have going on right now in my company. The first is my next hire retreat, which is going to be in Maui, Hawaii. This is May 10th through 14th. Please check it out at taragarrison.com slash retreat, and it will redirect you to that page. This is going to be focused all on physical health. So my retreats from now on will be focused on one of our four peaks of hire, which are personal, physical, professional, and people, which are like the four key areas of life that we focus on. And this retreat is all focused on physical. So we're doing a biohacking buffet, a biomechanics class, the mindsets behind physical transformation you might be missing. We're also doing health the way I feel like it should be done. And that is having fun, playing outside, hanging out with cool people. We're going to be surfing, spending some time at the beach, hula dancing, so many amazing things. So if you want to check that out again, it's taragarrison.com slash retreats. And, um, the other thing is a new coaching offer that I have. I'm very excited about this. This is my path to being able to help more people. And so I have offered a group coaching form of higher coaching. What that involves is a private coaching community, a group coaching call with me once a week. And you also get access to my coach Tara app included in this and access to every single program that I have ever released all in a vault for my higher coaching clients. So very excited about that. It is only $297 a month. So significantly discounted from my private coaching. So if that's interesting to you, please check it out at taragarrison.com. You'll just see it right there on my homepage, or you can go directly to the taragarrison.com slash higher dash coaching. All right, let's go ahead and get into the show. All right, guys. So I've said many times that the main reason I started this podcast was because I have access to so many incredible people in the health industry, and it felt selfish to keep that to myself. And this episode might be a little bit um, controversial, possibly, but I like, 
I will never ever um, attempt to throw anyone under the bus, but I will always attempt to give you guys the most accurate information that I can possibly muster up for you guys. And that is why I have Frank on the show today because I got a little confused. I got a little confused. Um, and I just wanted Frank to clear this up because if you guys haven't heard Frank on the show already, you haven't been introduced to Frank. Frank is like the resource on exogenous ketones. He has been around forever. Like since it started, since most of the companies you're seeing out there even existed, Frank was already the ketones guy, the ketone ester guy. You know, you th like think back to if any of you were early in the keto space and you heard about Ben Greenfield trying, you know, ketones and it was like, no one can get these because they're thousands of dollars a serving. Like that was Frank, you know? And so like, he's been around forever. He's going to give you guys so much information today, but I got confused because I don't know some of you guys I don't mean this in any, like, I don't mean to throw anyone under the bus. I just want clarity is all. And, um, I've seen that HVMN came out with ketone IQ. Okay. And I was, you know, possibly going to interview the HVMN, uh, founder on the show. And I started looking at this product and I was like a little bit confused because first of all, they said they were the first drinkable ketone on the market. And I was like, excuse you. No, you were not. <laughs> yeah, well, so once, me... once you lose credibility with one bullet point, then yeah, everything that, else is like a snowball. Exactly. Effect. I'm like, that's not right. true. Like, I was like, Ketone Aid was around before you guys even existed as a company. And so, like, that made me raise an eyebrow. And then I saw $6 million in funding. And I just started to kind of raise some eyebrows and I started to do a little research. And then I just reached out to Frank and I'm like, can you just give me the DL on this? Because I know that Frank will always be honest. Frank will even be honest about his own stuff, like what it does and doesn't do. Like, right. and that's what I love about you. That's why I trust you and respect you because you're not just trying to prove a point. You're trying to actually help and provide excellence. And so when looking at this product, I can see that it has 10 grams of R13 butane dial. Okay. So yeah. this is ketone IQ. It says daily ketone supplement, 10 grams of R13 butane dial is what it is. Now I also have this, and this comes from Frank and Frank's, this is kind of a newer thing for Frank. And this is what he calls hard ketones as basically like a healthy alternative to drinking alcohol. And you know what this has? 12 and a half grams of R13 butane dial. So a little bit more <laughs> per serving of the exact same thing that you're selling as alcohol alternative, not like mental athletic performance booster. This is, this is the same stuff. And then I actually, also actually, have just a, a quick correction, ethanol oh. alternative. It is an alcohol. It's not an alcohol alternative. It is it alcohol. Is alcohol. So we can go into that. Okay, we'll go into that. Thank you. And then I also have your KE1, which I am obsessed with. And even my son, um, he, I see him drinking this all the time. Like I know he's noticing the benefits because he, he just drinks it on his own. And I'm like, that's mine, but okay. <laughs> just kidding. I'm like, yeah, drink it, drink it, bud. But this one says total ketones, 5.5 grams. It has very different ingredients. It says DHB, D BHB ketone ester, D beta hydroxybutyrate, D one, three butane dial, uh, D eight BHB ketone salts. Right. So real different. That's not the same thing, you no. know, and right. my concern and your concern. And while we're talking about it today is because like, I want people to know the difference. So can you explain? And I know this is hard because it's like a lot of sciencey stuff. Right. So as in plain English sure. as you can, can you explain the difference? Yeah, to so us? I'm really excited to be on this because it's been at the top of my to-do list. I probably have a few sticky note to-do lists around here to actually do this video on my own. So now that you're interviewing me, asking me to do it, it's great because people are asking me all the time. I get the same text message you know, what is this product? And I give them a phone call and I say, I wish I had recorded that. So now we're recording it. So we can go into the, into the deep, deep dive of just this concept of hijacking science is what I want to go into how people say backed by science in all bold, you know, uh, aerial font. And then when you actually look at the science, it's not the product that they're selling <laughs> and, and how they get away with, you know, trying to do that. So, okay. So there's this umbrella called exogenous ketones. That's when you are drinking your ketones externally, as opposed to making ketones through your body, endogenous ketosis. And many company companies, every single company actually, except for mine, will say, drink this drink and you are in ketosis in 15 yep. minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. And it's very, very misleading. 
Mm -hmm. um, because there's two ways to define ketosis. One is ketones in your blood. So if you were to test your blood, you would start with zero, assuming that you're not on a keto diet, you'd start with zero, and then you drink this drink, and an hour later, your ketones will have risen. So some people define that as ketosis. But then the other de definition for ketosis is actually doing a multi-day fast or entering into a ketogenic diet where your body burns your own fat reserves, makes ketones, and then you test your finger and there are ketones in your blood. And so that's the second definition. So these companies are technically, there's a scientific paper that used the phrase nutritional ketosis to define this you know, externally consumed ketones. And these are scientists that don't know anything about marketing and consequences. But then these companies say, you know, drink this and you're in ketosis. But so technically one might say that it's correct because there's ketones in the blood, but the consumer is hearing something different. They're thinking that it creates fat burning and it mm -hmm. doesn't do that. It actually mm -hmm. skips that exact step. So you consume the ketones, it skips the fat burning and puts ketones into your bloodstream. But the consumer thinks that they can sit on the couch, drink this drink and burn fat. And okay. it just doesn't do that. And I've got to interject. Well, this is our, uh, we're not holding back, just being real. I mean, you and I have been in the keto, well, you've been in the keto space much longer than I have, but we were in it before. Like when I, I mean, you were around, I think like keto cookie, there were no keto companies back when I started hardly at all. Like we were buying our keto meters on eBay. Like they were hard oh, yeah. to find, you know, there weren't any of the, all these like testing, uh, you know, all these companies and prove it. When I started with prove it, I was a, a prover. I was, you know, signed up with prove it. And I went to one of their things and I'm just being real, even though prove it actually has some really great products. And I think you agree I'll talk about that. I'll agree with that. Yeah. But they, I remember back in 2017, going to one of their events and they were literally telling people at this event that they could eat fast food, drink ketones and burn their fat off. And, yeah. you know, the guy I was dating at the time, I give him props. He stood up in the back of the room and he kind of made a scene. He was like, this is bullshit. This is not correct. Like what you're telling them is not okay. And it was very awkward and uncomfortable, but it was true, you know, and that, so this kind of stuff you see it, I see, I see keto products at sprouts and it says, melts fat or burns fat. And I'm like, this is just lies, you yeah. know? And so, yeah, they, it, it's, it's, it's so bad that shark tank actually had to come up with a one minute infomercial saying that there's some spam going around claiming that all five shark tanks invested in some keto pills. And they show yes. these Dr. Oz videos of Dr. Oz pouring an acid into, yep. into body fat, melting it. And they make this video and they say all five shark tank people invested in these two people. And these two people, if you actually do an image search, were people that invented some sort of toilet thing. So completely I unrelated. I and, wrote a blog post about that. And oh, those yeah. products have like something like 500 milligrams of ketone salts in it, which doesn't do I anything. I don't I mean, even know if that even, garbage. I don't even know if that even matters because it's, it's right. such gibberish. And I got, right. I was doing keyword searches, uh, buying keywords on, on Google. And I accidentally bought you know, ketone pills or something. I got three calls in one day from people saying, I bought your pills and you guys keep on charging my card. I can't pay my rent because you guys took $70 out of, and I was like, Hey, it wasn't my company. Yep. And I, I directed them and these, like they get them on these auto charge and they can't get them off. And then you have mm -hmm. to cancel your credit card to get it. Yeah. You know, horrible. And horrible. while we're on this, no, I will say, cause I've been on the inside of the health supplement industry. I've helped formulate some products. I've seen how this world works. You're in that industry and I'm just being real. It is one of the most profitable industries in the world. So if you think there's not people out there who are going to lie to you and steal your money in order to make money, you're kidding yourself. There are, there are people who will, they full well know that they are buying a product that doesn't actually work in your body from China and they're, but they can technically say, this is what it is. They know it's going to do nothing for you. They mark it up by 500% and they sell it to you. And that happens a lot. And that's why we're doing this podcast today because we're going to clear some stuff up. <laughs> and the funny thing is it actually might work for them to a certain degree because of the psychology of yeah. you pay $30 for a pill to put in your mouth. How likely are you going to be to grab that bag of Doritos right afterward? It, it, there's actually some psychology some to placebo it. Effect, and that's yeah. why, you know, placebos work. And, right. you know, with, with prove it real quick, I like to give them props. Some people say, Oh no, I would never buy a comp a product from them because they're multi-level marketing. And I said, well, actually they had, they were the, uh, well, we had the non-racemic first, I believe 
of the you know the ke1 but they came out with a non-racemic ketone salt which we can get into and someone said well i would never buy from a company like that i said would you rather buy a quality product from a company you don't like or a bad product from a company that you do like so they right. said oh i like this company I'm like oh it's a great company but they're still selling the crappy racemic version yeah. So, and that's why I love you because you'll give them credit, even though they're technically a competitor to you, you'll be honest about like what's good and what's not. And that's what gets us kind of into this, um, you know, the yeah. <laughs> discussion of ketone IQ being marketed as drinkable ketone esters. And you're saying this is actually a ketone alcohol. Yeah. So they, they mark, they market it as, you know, the first drinkable ketones, which is just ridiculous. And we've had KE1 <laughs> for you know, three or four years. We have KE4. Sure, yes. we've had that for five years, but then someone might argue that that it's not drinkable because it tastes like a shot of tequila mixed with, you know, if they like tequila, then it's a apple cider vinegar and burnt tire. Really rough. But, you know, I do get people to say, oh, I learned to, you know, I learned to like the taste and they, you know, learn to like it. But yeah. it's, it's super rough, super concentrated. Um, so, yeah, you can maybe say that that doesn't count because it's, you know, undrinkable because it tastes so bad. But the kit you want, Give me a break. You pour that into it's a great. bottle my, of water. And my 14 year old like, son drinks it, you know? <laughs> so to yeah. say that you're the first drinkable is ridiculous. So then the next claim, if we're going to kind of go down the list, $6 million government contract, that sounds awesome. But the 6 million, and that's true, but that $6 million contract was for ketone ester, the former product that they used to sell three years ago. So they had the ketone ester for two years. But then they discontinued it, which we won't go into why, but they were no longer able to sell the ketone ester. But then they got a $6 million contract for ketone ester. And they're like, oh crap, what are we going to do now? How are we going to spin this? How are we going to spin all the benefits that this government trial is, is finding? And then like swap in another ingredient and say, oh, this is just as good. And that's exactly what they did. They were at the Metabolic Health Summit, one or two hour presentation on the ketone ester working for hypoxia. And then at the end, they said, well, during this ketone ester trial, we determined that it tasted too bad. So we went out and looked for another molecule and we found the holy grail, which is, you know, r 13 butane dial, which tastes better. First of all, it does not taste better. Um, but if you have six times more water, sure, the final drink tastes better, but you could have just as easily diluted the ketone ester and had it taste fine, kind of like what we did at the KU1. So it's just kind of mixing facts so that it, it's somewhat, you know, is believable. And yeah, the people's takeaway. And I even asked at the conference, I got up and I asked the, the people who got the funding, I said, can you assume that if two products both raise your millimolar to uh, your blood millimolars to one or two millimolars, can you make the assumption that what works for one works for the other? And his answer was a resounding no. You just can't. It's not the same thing. There's many more things happening. It just happens to be that we can take a snapshot of blood levels. So, okay, so let me explain what the exogenous ketones is that that works yeah, like sure. the high level. So exogenous ketones is consuming ketones, uh, consuming things that will result in ketones in your blood. So it goes, uh, you can start with C8. So coconut oil, technically the C8, which is the smallest chain coconut oil. So the hard coconut oil is C10, oh, more like C12, C14. C that's a hard yeah. coconut oil. You have liquid coconut oils like C10, but then you have uh, the no taste, further refined, refined C8 oil. Uh, Brain Octane is a company that sells right. you know, Bulletproof, uh, the C8. And the C8 will go, you consume it, it goes into your liver and 15% of it converts to beta hydroxybutyrate. Now it has its own problems, uh, disaster pants, because if you drink just a little bit too much, even if you get <laughs> used to it, it'll feel like you're in the game of thrones and people are stabbing <laughs> you with daggers and and uh, literally people have pooped yeah, their pants yeah. in the and keto the, world from too much c8 at once yeah, <laughs> so, yeah actually yeah. i heard that at a <laughs> bulletproof conference they accidentally had a new formulation or were giving it a slight amount too much that there was a huge long line you know trying to get into the bathroom because everyone yeah. is like oh crap because they're yeah and you can um, adapt to it i will say right, you know yeah, you, you can't adapt to it like i drew manning one time triple dog dared me to do three servings of c8 mct oil powder because the powder is a little less harsh than the yeah. liquid and but i had a i slowly worked up to that and i did it without and pooping my pants but that's like if you had liquid c8 like three servings like you're gonna it's gonna i would be so shocked if you didn't have some liquid stools <laughs> and and uh, dr mercola was able to get up to like multiple tablespoons like i don't know if yeah was you can 10, work up to it 10 a day like wow. 10 tablespoons yeah. like crazy insane amounts so technically yeah. you can get your ketone numbers up the same 
right. but it's just not the same. And we'll go into yeah. possibly showing a video that I took of Dr. Beach before he passed away. Um, and uh, that's Real a little quick. bit of a segue. Yeah. So my Let's, wife, yeah, yes, my wife's pause on who Dr. Veach is. So people understand kind of your background with the whole ketone world. Yeah. So Dr. Veach, he's the one that has, was working on this for 40 years. He passed away two years ago at the NIH and this book, one third of the book, Ketones, the fourth fuel by Travis Christofferson. If you really want to take a deep dive, read that. And it talks about how Krebs, uh, handed the baton to Dr. Veach and, and their connection. Uh, and he passed away a couple wow. of years ago. He's the one that really invented the ketone ester and got his blessing and brought it commercialized what he, you know, he knew about for 10 years, but it wasn't coming to market. He was very frustrated. And initially mm -hmm. I was trying to help him raise money, but the pitch went like this. We think people will buy $60 a day worth of this ketone drink that tastes like vomit. Please give us right. money. And right. the investors were like, uh, I'll no, just thanks. go put money into CBD oil. <laughs> and then right. I had some- And who is he to you? Who is Dr. Veach oh, to you? He's my wife's godfather. Sorry if I missed yeah. that part. So yeah, I, saw I interrupted him, you. Know, <laughs> I saw him at Christmas parties and, and yeah. he was just this quiet guy in the corner. And, and I learned about ketones so I could walk up to him and have a, uh, a normal conversation. And he's not used to people walking up to him and already knowing what ketones are because mm -hmm. you walk up to him and say, oh, what do you do for a living? He's not going to go down yeah. a two hour explanation. And there's a great right. podcast with him. I brought him kicking and screaming to the Bulletproof podcast with Dave Asprey. It's a great oh, epic one. Thank God we cool. have it because that's pretty much the only time that he's on video talking about it. I make a little cameo at the end about how okay. I was able to get to eight millimolars with no ketone ester, no exogenous ketones, just on a vegan keto diet. I was able to get to eight millimolars and you know, we wow, touch, crazy. touch upon that. Um, so that's exogenous ketones starts with C8. Some people say, oh, I won't drink exogenous ketones because I make my own ketones, mm -hmm. but then they drink C8. It's like, mm -hmm. well, that's exogenous. I actually mm -hmm. am not a fan of the C8. I just say buy cheap liquid coconut oil. And instead of putting tiny teaspoons of it, you can just take tablespoons of it here and there yeah. in your coffee, you know, after right. your meals, before your meals, and you can take much more of it and it counts towards your keto macros. So think of it that way. So then there was the ketone salts that came out. And what that is, is beta hydroxybutyrate, the main ketone is technically an acid. So if you consume it directly, the pH is too low, it burns a hole in your gut. So these companies added a base. The base can be uh, potassium, sodium, magnesium, calcium. Sometimes companies will do some tricks. They'll say, you know, sodium free. And what they did is it's just like a balloon. If, if you squeeze one end, you've got to you know, make the other ones larger. So the magnesium and the mm. potassium and the other numbers start to skyrocket and too much magnesium and you poop your pants. Like there's, Interesting. yeah. So, yeah. so they'll say, you know, magnesium free. Okay, great. Then the potassium and the salt, and then right. the sodium is much higher. And the word electrolytes people think is a fancy word, but all it is, is salt. It's the same thing. It's just salt. Um, and sometimes, so that's the ketone salts, but even worse than that is when they first came out, they were what's called racemic which means that only half of them were bioavailable. So what that means is if you've ever seen D-ribose or L-tryptophan, certain vitamins, the D form, and certain vitamins, uh, the L form. And just to make things more confusing, there's like a, uh, an R and S form, which is D is the same as R and L is the same as S. I don't know, sometimes they use the D, sometimes they use the R. You know, Everybody following, everyone yeah. following. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, uh, um, <laughs> but it's important because that's what we're getting to. I, right. And I appreciate you saying it because yeah. like this is R13, you know, so it's like, yeah. what does that even mean? Yeah. You know? <laughs> so then uh, I'll try and speed it up. The, the ketone salts, the racemic, half of it doesn't even work. The salt load is four grams. So it's just, and I'm all for taking salt in the morning, but we're talking about four grams of salt. Doesn't work. Nine times out of 10, they add caffeine. To yeah. these drinks and yeah. prove it is, you know, probably I would guess 80%, 90% of their sales are caffeine. And they say, yeah. oh, only 80 milligrams. But the ketones that are in there multiply the caffeine, but not in a buy one, get one free cup of coffee. No, it's like taking two or three cups of coffee and what goes up comes down and you crash. So if you're going to try those things, great, but try the caffeine free version. And yeah. sometimes the ketone salts actually do work for people that are trying to enter into a ketogenic diet but it's not the ketone. It's not the ketones. It's the salt. So when you enter into a ketogenic right. diet, you have massive water loss. And right. my wife was in a fetal position in bed saying, Oh, what are you doing? All these biohacking things. Like I'm trying to do the keto diet and my eyes are bulging, heart racing. And I call some experts and they're saying, they said, give her 20 salt pills. 
gave her 20 salt pills within 15 minutes she yeah. was fine so yeah. the amount of water you lose and salt is just so massive right you have to take massive salt and people say oh i put more salt in my eggs i said did you unscrew the top because right. that's the amount of salt so yeah. people take these ketone salts and the benefit is from the salt yeah. they could have just bought cheap salt pills or <laughs> table salt or you know right. redmond you know pink himalayan sea salt it's the salt. And after a week or two, when you're in the ketogenic diet, you don't need that amount of salt. So then they started finding that they couldn't put their rings on because that excess salt just made them bloat. So it just mm. doesn't work. They put it on the shelf until the next time they have a cheat day. Um, mm. So then, you know, Prove It came out with a, a non racemic version. So it was just the D form. So the salt load is cut in half and it's just the bioavailable form, which is fine. But it's still a ketone salt. The salt load is still two grams. It's still a massive salt load. And Dr. Veach had these racemic and non racemic salts 15 years ago. And he literally threw them in the trash. And he said, you know, your cardiologist would kill me if I gave you that much salt. So he discarded that. So then Dr. Veach's solution was to take this beta hydroxybutyric acid and combine another molecule called R13 butane dial or D13 butane dial. And what's unique about this molecule is kind of like the C8, it goes through the liver, gets processed by the liver and creates ketones, creates beta hydroxybutyrate. So it, but at a rate of 80%. So as opposed to 15% of oh, the C8, wow. 80% of this. So uh, the ketone ester, you consume it. Initially, we thought that it separated in the gut into two parts, but the Brianna Stubbs paper recently found that the ester actually enters into the bloodstream as an ester. And I don't fully understand, you know, how and why that works, but it's more bioavailable because the ester form gets it into the blood barrier and into the blood. And you can actually test the blood for ketone ester. So even though it might have one mm. or two millimolars of DBHB because it's converted, it still might mm -hmm. have, we don't know how much ketone ester intact in the system. So once it goes into the bloodstream, it then separates. So D beta hydroxybutyric acid, the acid form is in your bloodstream. You can test your blood ketones. And then the R13 butane dial, also known as D13-butane dial, goes to the liver and creates ketones. So then I asked Dr. Veach, hey, the ketone ester is super expensive. And by the way, we manufacture it here in the US and we'll talk about all these made in the US things where uh, all the lies about that. Um, and I said, why not just let people drink R13-butane dial? Maybe 20% more to make up for that, you know, 80% of it converting. And his answer was epic. He said, the mice were stumbling. So they gave it to mice. The mice were drunk. So then they discarded that and said, oh, you know, we can't give that to humans for all the therapeutic benefits that they were looking into. And that's when I had the, the, the light bulb moment. I said, I think some people might want that. And I you know, went off and filed a patent four to five years ago now for, you know, human consumption of our 1,3-butane dial for the purposes mm. of, you know, getting a buzz. Now the mice, the amount that they give the mice is, I mean, they give them a half their body weight and stuff like that. So they're, you know, okay. yeah. tanked. So <laughs> that's not the goal and that's not what we market for, but they said it just, it doesn't work because it'll give you a buzz. So fast forward to now, we did launch first, we were the first company to launch the, the R13 butane dial in the form of a yeah. seltzer and we call it ethanol free alcohol. Yeah, so or sometimes champagne. people say, yeah, the champagne, <laughs> champagne flavor. Um, so ethanol, people think that beer, vodka, wine are all different types of alcohol, but they don't realize that they're all the same base molecule. They're all ethanol. So if you distilled all of them, they'd all come back to clear, distilled, you know, ever clear, whatever, you know, grain alcohol. Um, so they're all the same base alcohol and ethanol converts in your system to acetaldehyde. And I might be saying that a little bit wrong, but impressed that I can even get that <laughs> acetaldehyde. And that is where all the toxic effects are. That's where the, the, the addiction effects, that's where the chemical, you know, the chemical cravings, the hangovers the next day, just not feeling right. Your HRV scores um, is from the acetaldehyde. This alcohol, it would be amazing enough if we had, in, and there's a company in, in the UK that spent 10, $20 million trying to invent an alcohol that wouldn't have the toxic effects. Mm -hmm. So if we were able to find an alcohol that actually just converted to water instead of acetaldehyde, that would be, that would just be amazing. That would be cover of time magazine stuff. This right. is actually better than that. So not only does it not make acetaldehyde, but it converts to ketones. So you get an extra yeah. boost of, you know, beta hydroxybutyrate and that's just, 
when people fully are able to digest that, it, it is a holy crap, holy crap moment of what it does. And the key is you get a buzz to it. If you didn't get a buzz to it, then and what's the point? Just go have a non-alcoholic alcohol. So you get a buzz. It's a different type of buzz. People compare it to like a Xanax. It's more of a relaxation type buzz, anti-anxiety, but, um, and it's shorter lived than regular ethanol, but ethanol is like an aggressive bar fight type. <laughs> and, and ethanol, you also, it's very addictive uh, acutely, meaning that when you have one can, you want another and another. It's kind of like a bag of chips where uh -huh. that, that carbohydrate sensation, you want right. more and more. This one, you know, you drink one or, you know, even two and you just, you feel full. Some people skip dinner. You don't have yeah. that craving to go after because of the ketone uh, boost. another one because it has the ketone boost. This is tidy signal. impact. So, suppression. So it's, right. it's a super, super drink neat drink ben greenfield you know loves yeah. it this is you know he likes the the gin and tonic and uh tim ferris unpaid you know at the three hour mark he actually pulled up the the ginger mule when they were talking about alcohol mm, alternatives really good. technically ethanol he said yeah. oh let me get you out of my kitchen what i use and he showed it to the guy oh he, that's the awesome free alcohol yeah unexpected that makes me, me happy like, to hear yeah um, so you know he's on the train Awesome. Okay. So to be clear, this, the, the, you know, this R, what, what do we call it again? Sorry. R13 R13 butane, butane dial. dial. Yeah. It will raise ketones because it's the same thing as yeah. what you just described and your hard ketones and your ginger mule and your champagne, they're all R13 butane dial. So the, like, so HVM and, you know, the ketone, ketone IQ will raise ketones. So where's, where does the problem come in though, in yeah. terms of what they're promising and like, cause it does raise right, ketones. Yeah. So that sounds so, great. Right. Well, the first problem is that it's an alcohol. Now they might defend that and say, oh, well, technically, hyper-technically, maybe it's an alcohol, but it's not ethanol and ethanol is the only recognized alcohol. Okay. But go to any chemist, look at the structure. It's an alcohol. Um, okay. And, you know, one person at a conference wouldn't take a sip of my R13 because she didn't want any alcohol. And I said, I respect that because she wanted to be sharp for the day. And then half an hour later, I see her slurring her words. And I said, did you just walk from over there? She goes, yeah. Did you take a shot of that stuff? She goes, yeah, why? It's like, you just drank, you wouldn't take a sip of mine. You just chugged an entire, you know, cans worth <laughs> right. in under 10 seconds. You are slurring your words. You are drunk. And she's like, oh my God. So the, the first problem is not disclosing that it's an alcohol. And that's, mm. that's just a big problem because they actually say to take three servings. So I don't have three cans here, but th the equivalent of almost three of these cans of our stuff for athletic performance, they say two to three for athletic performance, one, mm. two, you know, whatever. And that is telling a cyclist to go down, you know, a 70 mile per hour Tour de France, you know, weaving cycling route while being half buzzed. And it's just yeah. ridiculous. So what they did is they did this science hijacking where they, on their website, they cite all of these scientific papers to verify their claims. But most of the papers cite ketone ester papers. It's a different molecule. The ketone ester is a bond of BHB and R13, but that bond is crucial. And one might say, oh, well, yours has half alcohol. It's just not metabolized the same way. Once it separates, it's much you know, slower to separate, it has to go through the system multiple times. It's much different than just getting a straight hit. So what they do All is right, they- To clarify they cite, real quick, real yeah. quick. You, B, so ketone esters are a bonded BHB with this R13 right. butane dial. Right. But okay, that molecule it. itself, you know, scientists wouldn't look at that and think alcohol. While it technically has an alcohol attached to it, right. like sugar alcohols, you know, people aren't getting drunk on sugar alcohols that are in their, you know, keto cookies. And that is, that's an right. alcohol attached to, right. I don't know exactly what molecule, but so it's just, it's not an alcohol, doesn't give the same intoxicating effects, but it will, both drinks will raise your blood ketones. And, you know, within, mm -hmm. you know, I think a, 60%, 70% the, on a gram per gram basis that might, you know, raise your ketones. So you can drink enough to get your body up to one or two millimolars of both drinks. So what they did is they said, oh, well, this paper, you know, claims that the ketone ester got these subjects up to two millimolars and it worked. Therefore, our drink gets you to two millimolars. Therefore, ours will work the same. Mm. No, it, it's, it's mm. not, it's not, it's, not true. It's not, uh, it's an exaggeration. It hasn't, no, maybe one day that they can prove some of those things are beneficial. Sure. And I think, you know, it might prove some benefit, but um, you can also take a shot of tequila and maybe run your marathon faster. Doesn't mean that it's, 
healthy doesn't mean that it's the best thing. And well, like- let's let's hit on that real quick because you know if you guys haven't heard my other episode with Frank, we talk about athletic performance and all that. But you know, while I was looking up stuff right before we jumped on, I saw like Business Insider had done uh, a, a test on this. You know the ketone IQ. And the girl was saying, she was like, I did my workout class and I didn't notice any improvement. And I talked to them and they were like, no, you probably improved. And she's like, okay, well, I don't really know. And so let's talk about uh, well, the, the impact on there? athletic performance. It was because they did a review of the ketone ester before. I didn't know oh. that they did. I didn't know that they reviewed. They might have. They might I think have reviewed. It was, but, I think it was, but I, I could be wrong. It, but it, it let's could. talk about athletic performance in general. Uh, and, and so you're saying, all of the research is on ketone esters, yeah. which means it needs to be bonded to BHB. Well, all of the all the good research. So yeah. there are two papers <laughs> on one three butane dial for cycling performance, okay. and I can I can pull them up here. But one is the effect of one three butane dial on cycling time trial performance, and the bottom line was uh, these results. And results are not conclusive. Just because they had that result doesn't mean that it's going to be for every right. protocol. But they the bottom line is. These result, results suggest that butane dial has no effect on endurance performance. But here's the kicker. It said five participants uh, experienced low levels of dizziness, nausea, and euphoria were reported. Actually, in two of the participants, they were drunk. Like it, it, it <laughs> says that in there. So the only papers that they don't cite are the only two papers that are on you know that molecule. Now they could say, oh, that's the racemic version, not the chiral version. Uh, okay, but the second one is the effect of one three butane dial and carbohydrate supplementation on running performance. That's when you combine, you know, yeah. uh, glucose and they had, you know, no benefit. And also on their website, mm. they have five citations of as seen on these and insider and stuff. Those are all ketone ester. Those are all when five years ago when they had the ketone ester and outside magazine did an expose in it, but they left that quote on there and making you imply that it's the same thing. They even took on Amazon. They took, all of their 500 reviews for the ketone ester slipped in this drink and made it so that the 500 reviews as if they were reviewing this new molecule. It was not. Amazon finally caught on and separated it so they had to start mm. over on the reviews. But they literally you know, were taking all the reviews for the ketone ester and trying to sneak that in so that people- I don't like it. I don't yeah, like it. It's, it's all misleading. Like. So they have a chart on their website that shows the ketone ester skyrocketing and coming down fast. And then theirs is you know, more steady somehow they're able to spin it because any scientist would look at that chart and look at the what's called total area under the curve and say that the ketone ester was better. But they said, oh, well, if you, the, the ideal range is between one and two. And because the ketone ester goes higher, we're not going to count any of that. We're just going to mathematically calculate the time in that range and somehow spin it that the R13 mm. is better than the ketone ester. Like wh- why go after being just as good as the gold standard? Let's go to platinum and diamonds while we're at it mm. and trying to claim that it's better. It just, mm. it, it, it doesn't work. It has a different effect. So what we call one serving, and I saw you're actually drinking. We made it even more drinkable yes. ketone called ketone water, where we took the equivalent I'm of feeling it too. the it's nasty, nice. you know, what people say is nasty ketone ester. One cap became a serving size and they, you know, put it into one full can and it tastes great. I like to describe it as yeah. if you had, 10 sparkling waters from the grocery store, ours would be better tasting than maybe two of them. Yeah, it's I mean, really it's good. Be better I mean, than, it's not going to be better than all 10 and the water loose and stuff. I mean, I'd yet. say most people would like this more than kombucha. And yeah. it's like, I've, I'm feeling it. I, I've been noticing the whole time already. Yeah. Like that's why- so That's the ketone water, no protocol. That's just a drink anytime you drink sparkling water. You can drink it you know, pre-podcast, post-podcast with a meal. Just no protocol, just a yummy drink that you can have three or four times a, a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, ben Greenfield also, you know, absolutely says this is the best tasting stuff yeah. that's been out there yet. Yeah, you know, it's nice. He absolutely loves it. We actually just made a vanilla. Uh, mm-hmm. So this one is a black cherry. We just made a vanilla, orange vanilla, like yesterday. So we're going to be coming out, you know, with that soon. So we solved the, the, the taste problem. Um, and, and they also had this graph comparing their product to other products on the market. And they, what they did was they took the price of the ketone, the full bottle, and they said that, you know, there's this $4, there's this $4 a serving, and then this is $30 a <laughs> serving. Well, okay, that's how it was four years ago, but now a serving is the cap. Right. So the cap is actually $2.50, you know, $2 to $2.50 <laughs> versus your $4. So it's actually 
they claim, oh, we dropped the price by 60% per gram. Yeah, but if the effectiveness isn't the right. same and you have to take, right. you don't even take more because if you take more, you get you get drunk. So you, you can't just say, oh, just take more of that list. It just doesn't work. So ours is, you know, quote unquote, $2 a serving for, for the, you know, the cap full and theirs is $4. So we're still half as expensive, but then the effect just isn't the same. So if you want to be studying, you know, for exams and it really to hit your brain, you want the ketone ester. And one right. lady who was working for the multi-level marketing company selling ketone salts for two years and trying them, you know, hundreds of times, drank at the Metabolic Health, Health Summit, drank uh, one or two capfuls of our stuff. It hit her brain and she said, oh my God, I've drank the salts for years and it never has affected me that way. Let and me said, say this. Yeah, Let me say not this. the same thing. This is how, so we have a, a mutual friend, a, a friend named Ryan. He was like, hey, you got to meet up with Frank at Metabol Health Summit. And this was like several years ago that we met, right? And I, I told you, I mean, I, I had to like everything, the C8, all the prove it, all the, every, you know, ketones or whatever, keto coach, I've tried everything. And I had been off of keto for a little while when I met you, right? So I hadn't, I hadn't been in nutritional ketosis for a little bit and I definitely hadn't been taking exogenous ketones. And so I wasn't in ketosis or anything when we met and you gave me a bottle of, I think it was your KE one. I think you had this already. I'm maybe, pretty sure you maybe, had like yeah. just, just come out with it, I believe. And I drank this. We were just walking around where all the little booths are and stuff. And I like, I was having a moment with myself. Like I was like, Oh my gosh, my entire brain just turned on. Like it felt like I had right. tension in my head that just all went away. And my whole, it was like the whole world opened up to me. Seriously, it was that dramatic for me. And then yeah. I loved your response because I was like, dude, Frank, I'm having a moment right now. Like, holy shit. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like my entire brain is working. Like, I, I can't even explain to you what's happening to me right now. And you were like, oh, really? I don't have that dramatic as an effect. There might be something going, you know, with, you know, we talked about it, yeah, but different people have different, if, it has right. to be the brain energy gap. If you have a bigger gap where your yeah. brain can't be fully fueled by glucose, yep. you know, if you're at a 70, 80%, the ketones bypass that blockage and fill the brain up to hundred. If was, you are at hundred, which my wife would uh, object to me saying that my brain is at hundred <laughs> uh, percent. It doesn't overclock right. you and take you to one ten, right. one twenty. It's not a stimulant. It's not like caffeine. Right. It actually, right. we think lowers um, your your heart rate and makes your heart more efficient as opposed to you know cranking it up. So that was uh, literally yeah. like a, 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 a I would say like a kind of a life changing moment for me because it was so I I have the APOE four genetic risk for Alzheimer's. My mom has Alzheimer's. You know, and it was like, dude. Like it was, I'll never forget that moment because of how dramatic it was. It's like, dude, you definitely have some like glucose impairment right. in your brain Actually, if you felt it that much. That's how I feel anyway. Travis Travis Christopherson thought that it would be good to have these in doctor's offices and actually have the patient on an empty stomach, drink the drink. And the more of a, an effect that they have, right. the more at risk that they are. Like because That's it just exactly. shows that there's a bigger gap versus someone drinking and they're like, oh, I don't feel anything. Okay, good. <laughs> you know, right, you can use right. it for sport. You can use it for muscle recovery. You can have other benefits, right? It, but just not the the brain thing. And yeah, for uh, me, it was a moment of right now. Carbs are like important for me for my lifestyle. I'm very athletic. I I I overall, but as I age, that moment was like, oh, I'm definitely going to be keto as I get older because yeah. <laughs> my brain's going to stop. Probably, I don't know. That's my thoughts anyway. For for me personally, that moment created that in me is like, as you age, girl, you're probably going to want to go back into keto more because like it was just so eye-opening, but that's how effective it was for me. And that's, you know, I'm just, just saying like, it's, yeah. a, it's, it's an extremely effective product because I mean, you've been from Dr. Veach to you, this is your whole passion. This is everything that you do and you're so dedicated to it. So I appreciate you being honest. It's kind of uncomfortable, these conversations, right? Because we never, I never want to like throw anybody under the bus, but like, dude, it's important that you guys get honest information. And I know that I can trust you on it because I've heard you say stuff that you're like, I don't think my stuff helps with that, but it does help with this. And it's like, right. okay, yeah. I appreciate that. And before, because I only have about 10 more minutes, I want to do this video about the C8 because okay. it's cool that yeah. you have that. Can this we is, this has not been shown anywhere else? So it's, it's, an, Let's uh, do it. it's an exclusive here. Let's see if I can cue this up and do shared screen. Can you give me access to share oh, the yes. screen? Give us just a second, guys. Uh, so I share screen and I have to got to pick the screen. Here we go. This is an interview with Dr. Beach, 2015. What are your thoughts on MCT C8 to make BHB? Like any of those mid, mid or short chain fatty acids, the reason is less than 10% is converted to ketone bodies and the other 90% is burned directly in the mitochondria. When you 
do beta oxidation in the mitochondria, you reduce the coenzyme Q. And the reason ketones work and give you more energy is you reduce the NAD in the mitochondria and you oxidize Q. That increases the redox span between these two first sites in mitochondrial oxidative phosphorylation. And that's what gives you the increased energy in ATP. So when you reduce the, the, uh, the Q, you destroy your ability to increase the energy in ATP. So none of those are any good. And only 10 of them, only 10% of it goes to ketones. The rest are burned directly. So that was him talking about, you know, C8. Why can't you just take more and more C8 to get the BHB levels up? It'll show, you know, the BHB. Um, it'll show the BHB levels higher, but it has to do with these NAD, NADPH ratios. It just, just doesn't work. And companies, Nestle has spent, you know, millions of dollars trying to prove C8 working for certain, you know, mental conditions. And, you know, phase three trial, they're like, oh, we must have, change the formula by accident. We're going to try again. Just, just doesn't work. Um, wow. So that's and, and crazy. What, what, so he's basically, he was saying that 90% of it is burned up in the mitochondria and reduces coenzyme Q10. Is that what he's yeah, saying? Yeah. Yeah. And, and honestly, I don't fully understand what he said. I have to like show yeah. them like this and have, have them repeat it, you know, to me more slowly. But the, the bottom line is that it's, it's kind of like if you're on an elevator and you jump up and down, the, the amount that you jump is one metric. But if you move the elevator up to the fourth floor and jump up and down, you're still, you're, you're not four floor. You didn't jump four floors high. You know, the base moved yeah. up. So it's about the ratio. So you want that, that ratio to be as big as possible. So if you have, even though you have BHB in your system, if 80% of the, or 90% of the C8 goes to, you know, hurt that ratio, you're not going to get, you know, that benefit of the mm. ketone ester. And it's, this stuff is super confusing. If you were to Google search ketone ester because they're a venture capital backed company spending $20, $30 a search, you'll think that that product is ketone ester because they buy all the ketone ester results. They'll even be on a podcast where the host calls the drink a ketone ester five times and, and the company doesn't correct him and say it's not a ketone ester. It's just not a wow. ketone ester. And it's just very confusing. And you know that confusion leads to sales. Because you can yeah. say, you know, 60% less. And, but, but what we put in one drink of this, three grams of active, we put 12.5 grams of R13 in here. So right. it's, just, it's just completely different. This will turn your, you know, your brain on and this will make you, you know, relax. It's just a, a different. Well, and I think anybody, you know, that there can be some confusion there too, because I don't know about you, but when I first start to have a drink, I kind of feel more like a little bit more dialed in to whoever I'm talking to. Right. So like that yeah, buzz yeah. when it's not super extreme can kind of feel like focus or presence, you know? Sure. And if it works for you, <laughs> all that matters really is if something works for you. So if you want to try it and you know, smaller right. amount worked for you and it didn't give you a buzz, then great. But you know, if right. you've only tried that product and you haven't tried the ketone ester and that had benefit then it's just it's still a whole other league. Once you actually try the ester, you'll see that it, you know, you know, turns the lights on. We've had customers that have been customers for 24 months, buying every month on subscription. They switched over to that. And a couple of weeks later, they were right back. And they said, no, 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 this is, you know, this is where it's at. Yeah, I know. I was kind of looking at their website and I just had to ask you this last question. Like they're talking about, uh, they call it like a nature's ancient energy source. Yeah, and that's I'm just, like, you know, that's just uh, <laughs> ketones that, uh, you know, when, when but endogenously well, endogenous and endo but they're, they're saying <laughs> okay. that they, they, they packaged endogenous, you know, into exogenous, you know, so, so that's, <laughs> that's fine and true, but it, it's also funny that they call on their spreadsheet, they have C8 oil and they don't call that an exogenous ketone. They don't call it the word ketone, but they call R13 butane. Now they say that you're drinking ketones. Well, you're really not. You're drinking the precursor for ketones. The C8 is a precursor for ketones, but on their website, mm -hmm. they don't call it, you know, when you drink C8, they don't call it ketones. Ketones, so it's just, right, it's just right. Marketing. Uh, uh -huh. And you know, real quick, the made in the USA, a lot of the salts on Amazon that are racemic ketone salts, they say made in the USA. And I found out that you can actually take a box of product from China, take it out of the box, put it in a new bag and put it into a tub in the US. And then it's called manufactured in the US just by like moving it into a tub, maybe sprinkling some extra stevia, and then it's suddenly made in the US. It's wow. just, you know, garbage. But we're well, really excited about the alcohol. 
once uh, we're going to have a beer soon. And then ultimately we're going to make the ketone water. We're going to make a, we, we didn't talk about it, but a snake water version. Cause we had that snake water drink making yeah. that into a 12 ounce drink where it has T cream, dynamine, branch chain, amino acids, no caffeine. Cause I'm anti-caffeine, but having, you know, five, 10 ingredients that will just really, really light people up. I love that you're anti-caffeine. Cause like I, to me, it's always, it's a cop out on a supplement yeah. when they add caffeine. It's like, okay, like, like, let me feel your actual product, not just a caffeine boost. Right. Yeah. Anybody so can get, I like, love that. Caffeine. And then they put also put niacin. So you get the niacin burn and flush, which I love, <laughs> yeah. but they put that in the drink. So you, you, you feel something, but yeah, caffeine people use our drinks, mainly the ketone ester to get off of caffeine. And one lady right. said, Oh, the ketone ester didn't work for me. And after a half an hour talking to her, cause I talked to a lot of customers, yeah, we find out that, that she was taking six cups of coffee and she went cold Turkey just to ketone ester. And she felt oh. quote unquote, nothing. So, well, what happens when you normally don't have coffee? Um, normally light, uh, I'm normally brain fog, depressed, irritable, <laughs> depressed. And you right. felt none of those things. I'm like, yeah, she's like, yeah. I'm like, well, tough crowd here because all yeah. those things went away and you went back to baseline that, you know, <laughs> It's not no, going to get I, much better than that. I'm such a believer and supporter of your products. I mean, to me, I, I feel like those of us, I guess I should just speak for myself, but for me being in the keto world for a long time, like I just know that Frank is the ketone exogenous, the, the keto, especially ketone esters. And I really, I, you know, have to say, even though you have this one KE one that has a little bit of salt added to help the flavor and, you know, yeah. it's, it's um, a little bit, it, I feel, I find it very affordable. I've recommended this product to a ton of people. Um, it's your, your stuff speaks for itself. Like your products speak for themselves. And, you know, obviously you have this passion and you're able to educate so well, but just try stuff. I'm serious. Yeah, if you want to put on the bottle, no claims, just results. So there are other, exactly. The competitor has like 17 claims that are all just mis exaggerations. We don't put any claims and it's kind of like, you know, your doctor sent you here or, you know, your trainer sent you here. Cause they know what they're doing. And recently we just, uh, we used to say we don't sponsor athletes. We get athletes sponsored. That was our slogan for five years, secretly taking people from like number 10th ranked in the nation to number one or number two, using our drink secretly. Uh, mm. Team Quick Step, the number one cycling team in the world, you know, Tour de France team. They finally, after three or four years of using it, you know, secretly or privately, um, they admitted to using it. So we are now an official sponsor of the, we went straight to the top. Number awesome. one team, number one team in the world. Yeah. So. That is what I'm talking about. That is awesome. Thank you so much. And I, I just drank some of the KE1 because I couldn't resist while it's sitting right in front of me. It's the peachy flavor. It's so good. Yeah. I like it. I think it yeah. actually tastes uh, like amazing. Good. It's got right. like a little punch, a little kick to it, but it's like, it's not undesirable. It and you can, good. you can slow release that and put that into a water bottle. Yeah. And it tastes literally like a sugar. There's no sugar in it, but a yeah. sugar peach just squeezed in the yeah. water. It's just, yeah. It, so it's not the, that's, that's not even the first drink. I was going to say that's the first drinkable ketone, but that's so ridiculous. That's not, that statement. It's not even, uh, yeah. There's yeah. Been well, that's you know, what I was like, yeah. excuse you. Uh, uh. <laughs> that's not true. Um, okay. Well, Frank, thank you so much. Um, ketoneaid.com. I believe I yeah. still have a coupon code with you guys. Yeah, I think it's just, coach Tara yeah, yeah. is yeah. free shipping. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So ketoneaid.com. Um, yeah, check them out. Try that. If you're having issues with alcohol, try the hard ketones. Or yeah. if you're not having issues with alcohol, just try them. Like we've had, we've helped people get off of a bottle of wine per day down to two cans, and she hasn't had any any That's wine awesome. in ten months, like literally ten months. And she went actually, she got off of our drink for a, a couple of weeks or a couple of months. And I, I, I asked her, hey, are you still drinking wine? She goes, no, but I'm not drinking your drink anymore. I'm like, uh oh you know, did you switch to beer or something? She goes, no, I'm just drinking water. I said, that's great. Wow. Go from wine to awesome. our ethanol free alcohol. And then just stopped after a few months. Wow. And then, you know, summertime came and she wanted, you know, some stuff. And so yeah. she brought it back in, but now she just brings her own BYOB to parties, brings her own, you know, that is so three. awesome. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up. Cause it's a great reminder as a solution for clients who are struggling with alcohol. And like, also, I feel like a lot of times alcohol leads to a lot of binge type eating episodes, yeah. but now you're getting like ketones. So you, there's some appetite suppression yeah. coming in as and well. And like one can, is going up. <laughs> one can will improve your sleep is what I found yeah. like deeper mm -hmm. sleep just compared to water. But once you get to two or three cans, no, your, your HRV is going to be worse, but okay. compared to ethanol, night yeah. and day we've got screenshots of people saying here's my ethanol score of 33 and here's mm. my r13 three cans mm. and it's you know 74 like just mm. drastic difference okay. and some wellness centers you know have their clients taken and i said what's the number one thing that a wellness center can do for their client not exercise not just 
get them off of that alcohol, <laughs> that one, mm-hmm. you know, only one can a day. That's the lowest hanging fruit, you know, improvement that you yeah. can do to your, to your body. Yeah. Awesome. And guys, if you want to dive deeper into all of the like little facets of athletic performance and, you know, we got really deep on our first episode. So check out Frank's other episode of my podcast, Frank. Thank you. Thanks for like, hopefully, I don't know. We're just being real. We're just being us. This is the same conversation we were just having on the phone. So I thought I'd just share it with you guys. So thank you for coming on and being willing to just be real. (laughs) All right. Thank you.